could be said that your first job in the political scene came in the 1970s when you served as an aide to Democratic Senator Henry Jackson. Your involvement with the US government then culminated with your role as the Deputy Secretary of Defense under Republican President George W. Bush. And what caused your shift from the, from the Democrat to the Republican? And kind of have your, have your political views altered significantly since the 1970s? No, the views of the Democratic Party altered significantly. I, I thank you for the question, actually. It's, you know, there's this um, evil conspiracy that's described of neoconservatives in foreign policy. When I think of the American leaders whose views on foreign policy come closest to where I would put my own, it's Harry Truman, a Democrat, great president of the United States. John Kennedy, another Democrat. He wasn't around long enough to say a great president. He, I think he could have been a great president of the United States. Henry Jackson, as you mentioned, senator from the state of Washington, almost a president. He was Carter's, he was the last man to lose to President Carter in the Democratic primaries, another Democrat. And Ronald Reagan, who started life as a Democrat and ended up as a Republican. The idea of uh, peace through strength and support for democratic values, you, we can argue about whether it's the right philosophy, but it's actually a bipartisan philosophy. It was very bipartisan until the Vietnam War sort of destroyed that bipartisan consensus. And to a very large degree, and Henry Jackson's an example of it, uh, once George McGovern was nominated as a candidate of the Democratic Party, you sort of had the Democratic Party veering over into some people. There are different ways to, to characterize it. I'm not going to try to characterize it. Uh, it would be pejorative in one way or another, but it, it was one that I found difficult to support. So my feeling is, I'm not saying my views haven't changed at all, and actually, the biggest change in my views is not this political one. I talked about how the world looked in 1981, where it seemed as though for poor countries, the only choice was between right-wing dictatorships or even worse, left-wing dictatorships. And I had a little bit of that view. And if you think about what happened in Iran, where you went from the dictatorship of the Shah to the arguably even worse dictatorship of the, of the Ayatollahs, it was not an unreasonable view. But the more I worked with the Philippines and with Korea and with Indonesia, it began to be clear to me that these were societies that were ready to change. But that is irrespective of whether you're a Democrat or Republican. Ironically, actually, I do think when you look for places where Americans agree on foreign policy, one of the places we tend to come together most is on peaceful democratic change. If the change, as in Iraq, it involves the use of force, it's a different issue. But where it's peaceful, the Philippines, South Korea, could go on with a long list. And even today with Egypt, for example, uh, you'd be hard pressed to find a difference between Republicans and Democrats over what our policy should be with Egypt. There's differences, but they're not partisan differences.